Hello everyone and welcome back to Griffin, Indiana for Farming Simulator 22 and this is episode 2 although it feels like episode 50 for me my goodness it's been a while since my last recording let me show you actually how long it's been I do have a couple of contracts on the go um, but if you see on the right hand side the time I've been playing this has actually been 12 hours. 12 hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> oh, so you want to know what I've been getting up to. Okay, so we've finished field one. Um, 
we got the cash, which was fantastic. But what was more exciting was I managed to pick up 1.5 million litres of straw. See there on the bottom right? There are more specifics. Um, and I also had some leftover oat, 19,654 litres. So not only did I get the 43,000, I believe it was, because I used my own um, harvester, and my own trailers, I managed to score really good out of that field. Only issue is it took me about six real man hours. <laughs> so, yeah, I was really busy. Um, so, and since then, I've taken on a few other contracts. I finished the plowing contract, but that plow was just been a nightmare. So I ended up, um, I ended up leasing another one just so that I can get the job done a lot quicker. I'm going to show you my favourite plows at the moment. Um, oh goodness me! It is actually morning where I am, and I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. <laughs> Every single wrong button I am pressing this morning. Okay, so plows. These are my ultimate favourite plows. They are actually mods. Um, and I would really recommend you download them. Um, Lizard SM82. And then there's a slightly smaller one of 72. But with the price difference not being that much, it, it's worth it. Um, these to me, are, they're, they're a godsend. I would really recommend you get them. You can put some attachers on them as well. On the on the on, it's just an extra thousand. So just in case you wanted to attach something else to it whilst plowing, is it? That's my uh, top tip for today. My favourite plow. There might be something else that comes out of this. You never know. Um, I just want to also take the time to thank people for watching. Um, I'm very new to YouTube not new to PlayStation, but very new to YouTube. Um, and it's nice to start seeing some new subscribers and some comments. Really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, and it really helps me to know what content you're enjoying, etc. So today, um, oh, I still haven't actually finished telling you what I've been up to. Um, I've currently got two contracts on the go. I've got a potato... Um, uh, contract and so we are seeding the potato and then I've got a cultivating contract I've actually subbed both of those out whilst I come and have a natter with you um, so I've started working on my own fields so I'm trying to decide what I want to do um, so let's take this little buddy over I also fertilised our soybeans whilst off camera to make sure, even though the yield is really bad, um, at least they'll be well fertilised. So these should be ready relatively soon. They should be ready, I'm hoping, by next month. It's quite hard to tell. Um, it's quite hard to tell because I didn't plant them, I should say. Um, but I've been working over here, as you can see. So I've started to mow um, so then I can wind row. Um, so I've bolted straight past the gate. Um, so I can wind row and pick this up. I'm probably going to put this in my fermenter. Um, turn it into silage and then make some of this hay as well I think my I think I would like to put sorry I have to go right in the middle for this gate there we go I think I would like to put cows in here um, I could plough another field here that would be quite nice but I'm thinking putting cows by the lake or the pond in the middle. This is quite a quite a nice unique layout. So I think I'll put some cows over here. That'd be quite nice. Um, 
and then the rest of it I'm 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 getting the job done <laughs> it's gonna take a while to get all this um, uh, mowed and plow uh, mowed and tethered and for the and wind roads so yeah it's gonna take me a little bit of time so maybe we can do a little bit of that now and we could pick some up and make some space for the cows I'm just trying to think maybe maybe I should do milking cows and then we could start doing um, some production chains that would be cool that would be really cool to get to get going so because this is quite a large field I ended up going with a, um, a two two mower setup just so that I can get a little bit more done um, and I couldn't afford anything more than this so I am buying the equipment as I go rather than leasing because I really want to build up my equipment um, so that is having an effect on the bank balance but that's fine that's what we're here for I am also keeping an eye out on the sales to see if anything has is going to pop into those great sales and get 50-60% off, that would be amazing. What I'm really looking for now, I need my own plough, I only rented that plough for that field. So I really need my own plough. Um, I'm going to need a limer and I'm going to need a sprayer for weed, um, for herbicide as well. So I've I've got to, I'm going to have to take on a few more contracts I think to be able to you know make sure I can keep up with what I need for the farm but that's that's fine that's what we're here for I think what I'll do is I'll just get this section done then we'll pick up this section and put the cows down and then I can I can mow the rest of it off camera we will need to go and pick up a uh, a wind rower I think it'd be quite nice this is quite a, this is a really nice environment over here with a bit of a mixture of everything I think get the cows in I do need to make some TMR first. The question is, do I have enough money to, to buy um, a mixer to mix the, the silage up? I might just have to rent it. So we could do that. Let's see how far we get. I quite like how natural this field is with the with the trees for now but I'll probably end up taking some of them out if I'm going to plow some fields it doesn't really like this front mower doesn't uh, doesn't go around corners as well as I would like it to so how's everybody's week been? I'm actually recording this on Thursday. Now, ironically, my iWatch, it's quarter past seven in the morning and my iWatch is covering the day. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess it's the 8th, the 11th, the 8th. I'm going to have to look at my phone now. Wait a second, the 8th. It's Thursday the 8th. If you're watching in America, I hope you had a really good uh, Labour Labor Day weekend. And uh, that's just been and gone. Appreciating all the hard workers in America. I have, um, I have quite a lot of clients over in America, so... Everyone was very quiet on, on Monday. Um, very busy on Tuesday and Wednesday. 
so uh, it was very uh, it's always nice that you guys I was in uh, I was actually in Florida for Independence Day so 4th of July for anyone that isn't in America um, and I was we went to uh, yeah we went to Florida and we went to some of my husband's auntie's friend's house so we had loads of fireworks and lots of food and oh it was absolutely fabulous um, so we had a we had a really good time whilst we were out there <clears throat> you really know how to celebrate that's for sure to all my American listeners respect so we we just had um, our oh, contract 27 it's finally over that's the potato one I'll cash in on that um, we just had our last bank holiday um, we call them bank holidays here well this I suppose this is end of summer holiday and um, I didn't end up doing very much because my um, I went to go and take my my dog, my, my, my girl dog, um, for to be spayed. I don't know if, if you've listened to my other ones. And that just happened to fall on that weekend. So I ended up having to cancel all of my plans because um, I really wanted to get her spayed before we go away in October. Um, a lot of places in the UK do not take unspayed dogs. Or bitches, um, but they take unneutered dogs. So it's quite, it's been quite a challenge to find the right, um, the right home for our dogs. Me, me and my husband, we don't actually have children. Um, we have two, two fair babies. Uh, so they mean the world to us. So picking the right place, we, we've actually ended up doing a, like a home from home for them. Um, and I think I think that's the right choice because one of my my pups is she's only five months old, and I could have got her pre spayed, but I, I I just think she's too she's just too young to go through surgery. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me being too much of a softy, or I don't know. Um, it just feels like way too young. Let's turn these off. So anyway, that's uh, that's my my two pennies. <clears throat> We're going to um, St. Lucia in a few weeks to celebrate. Oh, they're both completed. Excellent. Do I want another contract right this second? Not whilst we're not whilst we're doing our our work. Um, but what I will do is. Um, ask a worker to bring back this is this is mine over here I'll ask a worker to bring back this tractor in fact let's get him to take it down here so then we can pick up our new windrower um, yeah, let's start with the windrower and then we'll have to do some tethering as well to get some hay. Let's check nothing's in sale. Uh, wood chipping, telehandler, tree logs. Definitely don't need a tiny cultivator. And I'm not planning on doing any grapes or olives just yet, so that's not helpful. All right, full price it is. Let's have a look. Windrower. I suppose that's the most cost effective, but it will take me forever, won't it? This is a big old field. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, I'm just looking at my bank balance, though. Um, maybe I'll lease this. This is the one, this is from the new Vermeer pack that came out a few weeks ago. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice, which isn't helping. 
Yeah, I'm gonna lease this. This is this is really good bit of kit. Yeah. Let's lease I'm gonna have to lease. Um purely because I want to save some money for the cows. Uh tedder. I'll just get a small tedder. That is really small though, isn't it? Um Eight point seven, four point four, seven. Okay. See that goes nine, and there's only a little bit more. Okay, let's lease that one. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I need my uh, I need my throat to. Unclog. Alright, All right, it looks like our. You're having a trouble, aren't you? You're getting into trouble. Alright, let's. Let's help you out. So I actually leased these two myself, so I'll, I'll hand these back. Um, I wonder if I can unload. Yes, I can. So I'll unload the seed which is in here for any future contracts. And at least that's one other thing done. That potato contract took a lot of seed. I'm not actually sure. I got 19,000, but I I should have kept count, actually. I think I spent about 15,000, maybe more, on seed. So it definitely, um, I'm not really sure whether it was worth it, especially as soon as I had a worker on there as well. I probably made a loss on that contract. I do, of course, do a lot of the work myself, as you can tell. I've been on here for 12 and a half hours. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure whether that was worth it. I suppose the size of the time it takes and the size I think this only this is only about three meters wide so I think if another one pops up I might leave that to another contractor and while I'm here I can pick up my weight I dropped off my weight here I'm just going to unload the seed over here can I unload from here I don't think this one's going to let me unload the one at the back. That's a shame because I've got 700 litres in there. Okay. It is what it is. Okay, so let's select that one. Let's return. And let's return you. I thought I returned that plough. Well, if I haven't, let me return it now because I'll be paying for that. I'll keep the because I need the forage wagon anyway, and I'll may as well keep the trailer. It's much better than the one that I was given at the beginning. And that forage wagon, I'm definitely going to need. Hmm. Actually, I might. I might just do one trip. I think you're going to wait there, Mister Wait. I think I'm going to try and take both of these at once. If I put the tether on the front and the wind rower on the back. Then we can only do one trip. That would be handy, wouldn't it? So is anyone else playing um, this particular map? I did see a comment this morning and I haven't yet replied um, and uh, yes I think it's, it's 
great to see that other people that are watching this are also on the map because we can share some tips it's one of the things when I'm driving past things I'm having a look and seeing what else I could do next and I did see an oil rig over here with a storage tank that would be quite cool I haven't ever um, mined my own oil before so that would be quite fun to do that's just up here to the right um, so maybe if I buy the plot of land that might come with that but I'm quite far away from being able to do that even though I've got 56 in the bank my, I really want to start developing my own farm and And what's, <laughs> I'm actually starting a new Let's Play, although I'm not going to release it just yet um, in the background for Attingham Park. Uh, it's a really lovely, beautiful British map. Um, and I'm, going, I'm actually trying something new. I'm trying it in a role play style. Uh, I've never recorded in that style before. Being a simulator game gamer, of course, to make gaming a little bit more um, fun, I have obviously in my head I, I do think of different storylines and things like that. So I might release that if I'm not too if I like it. I'm just playing at the moment to see whether I do like it or not. I'm going to pop the tether just here. Um, so yeah, I, I need to decide whether I like it or not before I before I release it. I don't know whether it's my style or not. So when I do release it, I would love your opinion. Um, but be kind. I am, as you know, I'm very new to YouTubing. So lower my windrower. Let's turn this on. Now I, I actually reviewed the uh, Vermeer pack when it came out, and the way how they described the uh, equipment was sturdy, and I thought that was a really weird way of describing equipment, but actually it's not. It is so sturdy, and. So when you turn corners with some, some wind rowers, they sort of swing. And I find that swing makes it really <laughs> difficult to control. Um, to control the, uh, the actual wind rower itself. And you start missing bits and it gets a little bit frustrating. Um, so sturdy is actually a really good explanation for this bit of kit. It, it really is sturdy. All right, I'm going to go through here. I'm just going to turn you off a minute. I don't want you to start wind rowing that. Let's come back around here. So this is when dodging trees isn't so fun. <laughs> See, I missed a bit there. This really is a beautiful map though. I've been I've really enjoyed every minute I've had it on here. Although it's um, taken a lot of my minutes. But I had plenty this long weekend as I say because I had to, I had to stay in because of um, Luna recovering from her surgery. So it it kind of worked out. Would I take the a contract on the biggest field when I start a let's play again? Probably not, because there's too much of a gap between them. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's probably another big lesson learned. But it was uh, it was enjoyable. The that old harvester that I have was going only four miles an hour. It was painful to watch. 
uh, <laughs> I really just wanted to to give it a kick up the the backside. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we were lucky that we even got given one. That's the way how I see it. Sometimes when you when I start let's plays, I sometimes start with absolutely nothing. Um, this new Attingham Park one I'm producing, I only start with <clears throat> a little bit of money. Uh, I think a thousand, a thousand pounds in my pocket, and um, and that, uh, and I'm looking for somewhere to live and things like that, just to try get an immersive feel. But it's a very, a big community feel in that role play, so I think I will try and brave it and release it. And there have been um, there have been quite a few new mods that have come out, which I would like to. I'm just gonna lift this a minute. Um, I would like to get around to reviewing some of the production chains. There's some quite good ones, which have come out. Um, one is making for, for making fuel. And I have produced a video on making fuel before, but this one is a lot more um, versatile. And I've put it on my Western Worlds map, so I need to go back there and actually give it a try and test it. So then I, I can actually show it in a video. But again, that's something else I need to, to sit down and do. But uh, I think I've mentioned in my, my previous videos, I don't know how many you've listened, so apologies if you're hearing this all over again. I actually run a business with my sister. Uh, we have a marketing agency and um, a publishing website in the water industry. So my days are very full, so I tend to get up nice and early to do my recording or late at night or at the weekends um, and of course there's a lot of time in between that I actually need to play to make the let's plays worth it for the viewers so it's it can be quite <laughs> it can be quite a, a, a balance so I apologize if there's gaps in between we have been with, with work we've actually been very busy um, which is a blessing. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. It isn't my finest work, that is for sure. Right, I'm going to come and grab you again in a minute. I'm going to tether this side, I think, to do the hay. Gaming has been a passion of mine since probably before I could walk. <laughs> um, but for as long as I can remember, let's put it that way. For as long as I can remember, I have adored gaming. And um, some fold, lower, get in position. There we go. So I've been, I really have over the years um, running a marketing agency and before that I was working with other people and it ha they are very high pressured, can be quite stressful job, jobs and job choices. I think that's kind of the, the word I will put, say. Um, and I have a an odd medical condition called functional neurological disorder, um, which I, I, there's actually nothing physically wrong with me. But when I'm stressed or uh, anxious, 
my body paralyzes me. <laughs> my brain tells my body to stop moving. Uh, normally my legs, sometimes full body. Um, and then my muscles are weak for quite a few weeks afterwards. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I had like a really bad attack. It was a few months after COVID hit back in 2020. And um, I decided then I needed to take a little bit more control of my life. Um, so me and my sister set up our own business, so at least I had the flexibility if I have a bad day, if I've, I, I can go lie down, you know, really take meditation seriously, make sure my, my mental health is in a good state so that my physical health is, is also on an even keel. Um, and I never could have imagined something like this happen. And I, I, I always say, people say, that must be scary, that must be horrible. I just count myself really lucky because when I when my body does go paralyzed, I'm fine within a couple of hours. The worst case was about three days. Um, but that was when I didn't really know what was wrong or what was going on. So now I've got much more control over it. And yeah, I'm, I like to say that I'm very lucky. It's like my, my body's in a way of telling me when I need to take a step back, take a breather. So why am I telling you this story? Um, gaming is kind of my way of relaxing. And also I'm a massive fan of, um, well, I'm a real fan of most games, to be honest. Um, but I, I like Call of Duty, I like Final Fantasy, I, I like them all. Um, but about six, seven months ago, I was playing uh, The Last of Us. And I don't know, I just started to get the biggest anxiety attack. <laughs> I think it's, I, it, because, yeah, they're, they're quite, uh, you're putting yourself in quite stressful situations in game format, of course. Um, and I just thought to myself, do you know what, I'm going to go back to my passion, which is simulator games. And I absolutely love, I have done since I was a child, love simulated games. They're far more relaxing. I think I like the thinking aspect of simulated games. They just transform you into a different world. Um, and I think that's why I like Farming Simulator because I do have a business brain. It actually keeps my mind active as well. And it's not just, it's, there's nothing mind numbing about Farming Simulator. And I think uh, there, there must be a lot of people which think, you, you play in a farming game? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so immersive that the technology, the mods, the just everything about it is, 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 is fabulous. Um, and if you have watched any of my other videos, I have admitted I've never played any of the previous farming simulators before. I generally didn't think I would enjoy it. I really didn't. Um, but then when I was looking for another game to play after I completed Planet Coaster, um, which is another really good simulator game, I come across Farming Simulator and um, when reading about the production chains and things like that, I thought, that actually sounds a bit of me. So uh, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm playing this game. And uh, yeah, I, I feel very lucky to have found it now, to be honest, because it's it's almost like I found a community. And the, one of the things which brought me to recording was because when I started playing this game, I really didn't have a clue at all what I was doing. And when you come into the game, of course, you're in Elm Creek 
and uh, they give you some equipment so you go on as a new farmer um, and that's about it they kind of tell you to harvest this field to, to do X to do Y to do Z and then they kind of leave you to it and I've, most games have some kind of tutorial but this one just sort of launches you in like you know exactly what you're doing and I didn't know a cultivator from a cedar from a windrower to a tether you know I hadn't a clue um, so <laughs> when I started I was like oh my goodness this game isn't going to be for me um, so then I jumped onto YouTube and I found lots of how to's and all of a sudden I've found it quite a big community of, of, of people which love this game as well and I decided actually this is quite a cool place to be and when I started playing the game I, I just I just fell in love I thought it's an awesome game um, anyway I know I've been ranting and talking for ages but that's that's why I'm here and I decided to start recording because it's actually always been a dream of mine to have a career in gaming. It is my passion. Um, so I thought it's going to take a good few years to build up uh, an audience. You have to put in a lot of a lot of work. But to be honest, I, really, I just don't see this as work. I I enjoy <clears throat> I enjoy every minute. So I'm just going to get a drink. <clears throat> See, that's my body's way of telling me to, to be quiet. <laughs> You've heard enough. But I would love uh, for you guys to leave some comments to tell me why you got into to Farming Simulator. I always find it quite interesting. Are you a farmer? Are you a real-life farmer? Or do you just like simulator games? My um, my whole of my father's side of the family are in farming or part of farming. My my dad isn't. He he actually left. Um, so he was born in the West Country uh, in Devon, and um, his father, my grandfather, he he was a farmer and they lived on a farm and. When my dad was a kid, he, he used to work and help out on the farm. Um, and my I've got three uncles. One of them isn't in farming, but has worked on the farm. One of them is fully fledged. That's all he does. And the other one is in fencing. So they all... Sort of my, my past is kind of uh, linked to farming and my mum's side um, is more on the entrepreneur side and uh, my grandfather was the local milkman so when he finished fighting in World War Two him and his brother set up a, um, a business so they started buying properties um, and they bought a little milk. They didn't actually have their own cows, so they had a supplier. They were the delivery side. Um, so they, yeah, they delivered the, the milk um, to the local village. Then he set up a betting shop and he had a couple of other shops. And so I think it's uh, the business genes and clearly the farming genes are in me. <laughs> but as I said, when I jumped on the game, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't have a clue between, as I say, a cultivator and a, and a plow. Didn't have a clue. Um, so it's been an educational process for me, and I kind of know what I like to learn. So I'm trying to build up a load of how-tos using the latest mods as well. Um, but if there's anything that you would like to see me do, that would be, please tell me. 
because I am new and also I don't know it all. Um, I I do not know it all. I I saw a comment and I apologies I haven't got to it yet about um, silage getting silage bales onto the train. I haven't actually yet given that a go, so I I will I will give that a go and see what um, see what I can find out. So let's go pick up the wagon. And then my plan is to pick all this up, then we'll put down some cows. Okay, I'm going to start with the grass first because I'm going to turn that into silage, so I'm going to put that in my fermenter. Um, so let's get to that straight away. I'm going to turn on the wagon here so I can tidy up this pathway. Oh, it's going to struggle with this tiny John Deere, isn't it? Ooh, I might have to switch it. see how it goes So what I'll do, um, I'm sure you don't want to sit here watching me pick up grass, I'll, I'll bring you back when I finish this and we'll go put it in the fermenter um, and then I will pick up the hay and we can start to make some total mix ration. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've got 58,000 litres of grass. So we're going to pop it in the fermenter silo and get this churning. Here we go. Lovely. All right, let's have a peek. Um, 
Is there a trigger on here? Okay, so I'm just going to go into production chains. And of course it chooses now to save the game. Um, right, let's pop in here. Um, we're going to do grass silage. So, yeah, and we want to keep that storing. Excellent. Okay, so let's leave that to do its thing. And I will go pick up the hay, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, so I have some silage churning away and fermenting. Um, I picked up some hay as well. So now I thought we could pick a... Um, a pasture so let's have a look what we could actually afford there's not going to be much that we can afford I'm, I'm actually starting to worry if there is one okay we do have a couple of options that's quite cute okay so we've got 50,000 that's quite nice I've, I've used that one before, that's quite good as well. Okay, let's just get a couple out to see what they look like. Um, that's, quite, that's quite nice. I'm not sure if it's as in keeping. That's 45 cows. See, there's 22 there, but that's a pasture, I'm not sure. Let's have a... Let's have a look at this one. This is 45 as well. Certainly I don't have enough money, but that's 50 and I've got 53. Oh, it's because of the land. Um, okay. Simple cow barn, auto water. Might have to just go for something like this for now. Go for something like that for now and then we can upgrade it in the future. I can move them out and then... See, I would quite like something like that really, but we don't have enough money yet. The other thing is, my signage isn't ready, so maybe, maybe I take on another contract and we put, um, I save up some money and we put down a nicer, a nicer cow barn next time. Should we do that? So if I go and have a look over here now, um, I believe there is a gate up this side. I have a lot of mowing and grass picking up to do, which I can do that off camera. Uh, yeah, there it is. Let's jump out quickly. So I went to go pick up a a mixer as well so I've, I've got in here uh, 35,000 litres of hay and obviously I've got ridiculous amounts of straw so that's that's not gonna be a problem for a while and then we've got yeah the silage is still churning away so let's just get out of the rain let's stand under here um, I think what I will do is take on a couple more contracts uh, so there's a fertilising contract there. So I'll accept that contract. Um, and I'll do these off camera and I'll, I'll earn some more money. And then we'll put down a nicer cow shed. Because um, I really, once it's there, you can't move the, the buildings. You have to sell them. So let's, let's just get this right from the office, shall we? Um, so on that note, I'm going to leave you there. It's it's all rainy now anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go hide <laughs> away from the rain until until it dries up. 
Um, it's actually the, the weather outside here in the UK right now is exactly the same, ironically. Um, I normally come on to my American maps to escape the rain. Um, but thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please give me a like and please don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave comments, my ideas and suggestions for the next episode. Um, but thank you again for joining me and learning more about my story. And next time, let's start building our empire. Thank you so much and have a great day.